that song. I know that you do too. A lot of wonderful truth uh, in that in that song. Little is much when God is in it. Amen. Well, if you remain standing and have your Bible open to John chapter number three, John chapter number three, and we'll continue in our study in the gospel according to John. Uh, we started a number of weeks ago and and uh, chapter one and verse number one. And we're studying verse by verse as we, as we go through uh, uh, the gospel account of, of John. And, uh, and, and then we've come down now to chapter 3. And we began that last week. We talked about the doctrine of the new birth. Verse 1 down through verse number 7. And, uh, and, and we realize how important and how critical and how necessary uh, that is. Uh, that you must be born again. Amen. Well, let's pick up with verse number eight and just concentrate on the words of Jesus here today. When he, when he said in verse number eight, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. He canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. I'd like for us to think this morning on the thought that it's like the wind. Talking about the new birth, uh, the doctrine of the new birth, the, the, uh, the, the event of being born again. It's, it, Jesus teaches us here, he says, it's, it's like this, it's just, it's like the wind, it's like the wind. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for the reading of the word of God this morning, the opportunity that you give us to study once again in this wonderful uh, account of the gospel of, of John the Apostle. Lord, we do thank you especially for this, uh, this third chapter of the book of John, the emphasis here on the new birth, how important it is, how, how necessary it is that people be born again. And Lord, we do pray that you would speak to hearts. We pray that uh, for anyone that may come across uh, this message on the, on the internet uh, in, in, in the days ahead, Lord, just that you would take it in the Spirit of God, that, that it would catch uh, people's attention and that they would stay with it. They would listen with an open heart and, and a desire to, uh, to hear from you. And Lord, that the Spirit of God would speak to their hearts, convict them of their need for Christ. That they might also come to that place, that point in their own experience to know the new birth, to be saved by grace and have the all their sins forgiven and having the gift of eternal life. But Lord, we pray for the, uh, for the souls of men. We pray for souls to be saved, for lives to be changed, for revival to come. And we ask that you'd bless the preaching of the word of God today with the presence of your spirit and draw us to yourself that we might know more of you. And, and, and Lord, know more of our relationship with you through faith in Jesus. For it's in his precious name that we do humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you again for standing to honor the reading of the Word of God. Well, he says, like the wind. I think the Lord Jesus is saying here that the work of the Holy Spirit in the salvation of men is like the wind. Uh, it, it takes the Spirit of God, you understand, for you to be born again. And, and how that you must be born again. In verse number three, uh, the Lord said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And so he says, you can't see the kingdom of God. You'll never enter the kingdom of God. And in other words, you'll not have eternal life. Uh, you'll, never, you'll, you'll never know God. You'll never know heaven unless you're born again. And, and, and then it said in verse number seven, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And so that's an imperative, you understand. That, that is a necessity. It is something that has to happen. You have to be born again. It's like Peter uh, said, as recorded in Acts chapter 4, verse number 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby, listen, whereby we must be saved. He's talking about the name of Jesus. And, but he said, we must be saved. But he says, even more so, we must be saved uh, by that name of Jesus. In other words, dear friend, listen to me carefully. You, you, you can't get saved by the name of Mohammed. You don't get saved by the name of Joseph Smith or the, or the, the so-called Mormon church. 
You don't, you don't get saved from the uh, writings and te teachings of Charles Taz Russell and, and the, and the, and the so-called Jehovah's Witnesses. No, you don't get saved that way. You don't get saved, my, uh, dear friend, by praying to uh, the Mother Mary. You don't get saved by praying to Mary. And, and, that, and that she somehow uh, is a, as some kind of co-redemptress that many people have been taught uh, wrong, been taught erroneously, uh, that, that somehow Mary is the one that facilitates your salvation. No, no, no. He says, neither is there salvation any other. For there's none other name is the name of Jesus. Uh, whereby you must be saved. And that's what the Lord is saying here. He says, you must be born again. Uh, you must be saved. It's an imperative. It is a necessity. Now, this really fits with an understanding of the doctrine of the new birth, if, if we'll just be sincere and honest about it, because the new birth is actually a spiritual rebirth. Amen? I think you understand that. It is, in fact, a spiritual rebirth. Uh, the new birth is real because the Holy Spirit is real. And the new birth is, in fact, the creative act of the Holy Spirit. It's what the Holy Spirit does. In verse number six, Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And, and so uh, the flesh birth, born of the flesh, uh, the physical birth, well, that's flesh. But that which is born of the spirit or the spiritual birth, that is Spirit. There is a difference between the spirit and the flesh. Amen. And so you have that. He says uh, the new birth then has to be that creative act of the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit, understand, is the third person of the Godhead. What we call the Trinity. And when speaking of the Holy Spirit, uh, we, we, we should use the personal pronoun. You speak of the Holy Spirit, you, you call him he. Or, or you speak of him as him. Uh, you, he, he is that, sec, that third person of the Godhead. There is God the Father. There is God the Son, Jesus. And there is God the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. So he's the third person. And we should, we should uh, speak of him in that manner. Uh, let's go back just a moment uh, before we really get into uh, the thought of what Jesus is telling us in verse number 8. Go back to verse number three, and let's just read these verses again uh, down through verse seven. We saw where the man named Nicodemus uh, came and, and, uh, and, 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 and spoke to Jesus, verse one, verse two. But Jesus answered, said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And, and so notice Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be, and be born? And so Jesus answers. He, he gives him an explanation to his question. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You notice that word Spirit is capitalized. That's the Holy Spirit. It's not just what, what we call the Spirit of man. No, it's the Spirit of God. He said, you, you're born of water. That, that, I believe, is an indication of the physical birth in, in relating and contrasting the difference between the physical or the flesh and the spirit. You'll run across some, uh, some that will preach and, 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 and there's nothing wrong with it at all. In fact, I think it fits also. It's talking about the water of the word of God, that you've got to have the water, uh, word of God to, uh, to be saved, and, and that's true. But here in the context of this, uh, you see, Jesus is contrasting the flesh and the spirit, isn't he? And so I think it's good to understand it this way. He's talking about, uh, because Nicodemus, his question was about physical birth. How can a man be born? How, how can he be? Can he go into his mother's womb? He, he's talking in the flesh, in the physical, isn't he? And so uh, Jesus says, well, you got that one birth, but you need to have a, a rebirth. You need to have another birth. And that is the birth of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have that, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And verse number six, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. He, he shows the contrast there. And so he then says, well, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Because you can't enter the kingdom of God unless you have been born of the Spirit of God. Oh, you've been born of water, you've been born of the flesh. And you got flesh, 
But my friend, uh, uh, flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. You've got to be born again in the spirit. There's got to be a rebirth, a new birth that only the Holy Spirit of God uh, can, uh, can, can bring about. And so Nicodemus, uh, you notice he's, he's thinking in the natural. Amen. That, that's easy enough to understand, isn't it? Nicodemus with his question, how can a man be born when he's old? And, and then he says, well, you talk about going back into your mother's womb, going to your mother's womb a second time and, and, and being born again uh, in that fashion? Uh, Nicodemus is thinking in the natural, but Jesus is speaking of the supernatural. Nicodemus is thinking the flesh. Jesus is speaking of the, of the Holy Spirit. And he's saying here, and I don't miss this, he's saying here in our text in verse number eight, he's saying that being born again of the Holy Spirit is like the wind. It's like the wind. I think it's an amazing thought what he describes here. It ought to be something that, that when we think about it, I, I, I believe in, anyone should be able to understand it. We should understand the new birth better when we realize that, that Jesus said, hey, it, it, it's like this, Nicodemus. It's, it's like the wind. Verse eight again, the wind bloweth where it listeth. Now here's the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. And, and then notice how he brings us in. So is everyone. He said, that's what the new birth is like. It's like the wind. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. Well, let me give you three thoughts here that I think, I think is a good way to understand this. I'll, I'll be giving you other various verses of scripture uh, in the Bible to go with these. And, and so you may want to write those down as references that you can go back to. But, but I see, first of all, that uh, what, it mean, what he's teaching us when he says that being born, again, being born again of the Spirit is like the wind. And we're talking about the Holy Spirit, the creative work of the Holy Spirit. And as we said, he's the third person of the, of the Godhead of the Trinity. And so we refer to him with a personal pronoun. We'll call him he. Amen. So we're going to call him he. And so we see these things about him compared to the wind. Uh, for one thing, number one, he came, that is the Holy Spirit, he came from heaven. He came from heaven. And Jesus says the wind bloweth. Well, where, where's that wind come from? It, it's from the heavens, in it? It's out there in that atmosphere. It, it's out there. You, you, you know where the wind is, is, is from. He came from heaven. It's where the Holy Spirit comes from. It's where the Holy Ghost came from. In John chapter number one, John chapter uh, one, and looking back in the first chapter and pick up reading with verse 29, where it tells us again how that the next day John saith, that is John the Baptist, he saith Jesus coming unto him saith, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And, and he says, this is he of whom I, of whom I said, this is John the Baptist speaking still. After me cometh the man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record. Uh, in other words, it's not like John the Baptist. He, he guaranteed this. He bare record. Uh, he he made, made this known. John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, that Spirit, that Holy Spirit, that capital S, in verse 32, 32, in verse 33, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit, that Holy Spirit again, who, uh, the, uh, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit, descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And, and then notice verse 34, you ought to mark it. And I saw, John the Baptist said, and I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Amen. How does John the Baptist say, I know this man Jesus uh, is the Son of God. He says, I know it because the Spirit of God has made it known. He says, I saw, I saw the Spirit uh, descend upon him. 
And he bare record to it. He guaranteed it. He, he, said, he said, I'm telling you the truth. And I'll bear record that this is, this Jesus is in fact the Son of God. And so where did, where did the Holy Spirit come? As John describes here, as he bears record, he came from heaven, amen. He descended. He came from heaven and, and, he, and, and he lighted upon Jesus and, 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 and remained there. John 14 also. John chapter number 14 and verse uh, 16. John 14 and verse number uh, 16 and verse 17 and verse 18. Uh, goes with it. Jesus said these words. He said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Notice that's capitalized. That's another name he's talking about. The Holy Spirit. He said, he said I should, he'll give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. And then he makes it plain, even the Spirit of truth. Jesus says, I'm talking about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Even the Spirit of truth, of whom the world cannot receive, because it and notice this now, he's, it, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and, and shall be in you. Jesus told his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. He says, I pray the Father, he's going to send another comforter. And he says, that's the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. And, and so let me ask you this, where's he coming from there? He's coming from the Father. He's coming from heaven, amen? He comes from heaven, just like the wind. And then John chapter 15, John 15 and verse number 26. John 15 and verse number 26. Jesus said, but when the comforter is come, whom, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Again, I'd submit to you for our understanding this morning. He's just saying he, he, he comes from heaven. That's where the Spirit of God comes from. He, he, came, he came from heaven. He's like the wind. John chapter number 16. John 16. And reading a few verses beginning with verse number 7. Down through verse number 15. John 16 verse number 7. Let me back up. I'm a page too far over. Nevertheless, John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. And for, uh, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I, notice this, I will send him unto you. Now, when Jesus says, it's expedient, he says, I'm going to go away. If you know your Bible, you know exactly what he's referring to. He's referring to what we understand in, in the book of Acts chapter 1 after his resurrection. And after his resurrection, spending 40 days with his disciples uh, in, the, in that time, following his resurrection from the grave, his death on the cross, his resurrection from the grave. Acts chapter 1 tells us that Jesus took his disciples up to the, uh, to the top of, of the mountain. It's called Olivet. There he uh, gave them a great commission where he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and, and in Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the earth. And then the word of God tells us that while they beheld with his eyes when he finished speaking, uh, that, that he ascended. While they watched with their own eyes, he ascended from them. And he went up, where did he go? Up in the, into the heavens, up into the air, up into the sky. And he went through the clouds. He went all the way over to the, to the other side, didn't he, amen? The angels stood there. They said to those disciples, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, he uh, shall so come again in like manner as you've seen him go into, go where? Go into heaven. The angels say that he went into heaven. And so Jesus says, uh, says I've got to go. Well, where is he going? He's going to heaven in, in John 16. And he said, if he's going into heaven, he says, he says I've got to go because, uh, because I've got to go in order to send you the comforter. He says, when I go, when he goes where? When he goes back into heaven. He says, then I'll send you the comforter. Where's the Holy Ghost coming from? He's coming from, the he from heaven. 
He comes from heaven. And, and he continues on in John 16, verse 8. When he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness, of, of judgment. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Of sin because, uh, because they believe uh, not uh, on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you, talking to his disciples. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. And verse 14, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things of the Father hath their mind. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. That's what the Holy Ghost has done. And when he said that, uh, when he told them that, I've got many more things I, I, I could tell you. But he said, but I've got to go away. You, you can't, I, I can't give to you now. But the spirit of truth is going to come. And uh, he's going to give it to you. He's going to tell it to you. He's going to guide you into all the truth. Let me ask you this question. If you believe the Bible, you've got to believe this. Where did Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, where did the apostle Paul where did Peter, uh, where did Luke that wrote the book of Acts uh, and the gospel according to Luke, where did they get the message that they wrote? He got it from the Holy Spirit. Where did the Holy Spirit get it? He got it from Jesus when Jesus went to heaven and then sent the Holy Spirit down from heaven. He says he's like the wind that he came from heaven. In Acts chapter number 2, uh, I suppose it would be uh, a passage that you'd be very familiar with, the words here. Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound. Notice, the, notice the, the point here. There came a sound from where? From heaven. A sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty what? A mighty wind. Came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And, and it filled all the house where they were uh, sitting. And we know that's the Holy Ghost. It tells us that uh, there appeared unto them those cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. It was all the working of the Holy Ghost, wasn't it? All the working of the Holy Spirit. And where did the Holy Spirit come from in Acts chapter number 2? He came from heaven. And as he came, how did he come? Like a, like a mighty rushing wind. <laughs> Jesus says that's what the new birth is all about. It is the creative work of the Holy Spirit of God in your life. And, and, and it's like the wind because he came from heaven. Amen. He came from heaven. Number two, uh, I think we can see this about uh, about the Holy Spirit and the new birth and how it's like the wind. Not only did he come from heaven, uh, as would the wind, but also he, he cannot actually be seen. The Holy Ghost of God, that's, that's a good term. I like the term Holy Ghost. Uh, he's the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit of God he cannot actually be seen. Now, now, Jesus, in Colossians chapter number uh, one, in Colossians chapter number one, let me read this for you. It tells us how that, that Jesus, beginning with verse 15, that this is who Jesus is. Colossians chapter one, verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God. Don't miss that. Jesus is the image, something visible then, an image, but he's an image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. He goes on and says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. He's the head of the body. The church was the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. 
And in Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 9, uh, the, Bible, the Bible says concerning Jesus, that for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus carries the fullness of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, Jesus is the one that carries all, all of God, all of the Holy Trinity in a body. But the Holy Spirit, you can't actually see him. Jesus was given a body. And he was given a body for a great purpose. That is to take our place on the cross of Calvary. A body that could be sacrificed. A body that could be put to death. A body that could be mistreated and, 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 and beaten and, 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 uh, and, 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 and crowned with thorns and, and, and a spear thrust in the side and, and be taken down and, and, and placed in a bar tomb. Jesus was given a body for all of that. And Jesus is all of God in the body, uh, in the flesh. He is the second person of the Godhead. And we understand that, me, that he is equal with God. He was made flesh, as in John chapter number one, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was nothing made that, that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And in verse 14, and the word was made flesh, dwelt among us, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. Understand, dear friend, that's who Jesus is. He's the second person of the Trinity of the Godhead. He's equal with God, but he's the one that was made flesh. Now in John chapter 4, verse 24, to that woman at the well of Samaria, you remember how they, they got in a discussion and Jesus said to her, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's John 4 and verse 24. Now Jesus, was Jesus, the second person of the Godhead, was made flesh. God, the Father, the first person, is a spirit. And to worship God, you have to worship him in the spirit, in the spirit and in truth. And I think that when he says we must worship him, we have to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we understand what, what that means and how we apply it and how we try to make that uh, true in our worship. But I think that it could be good to think of it like this as well. If you're going to worship God who, has a, who is a spirit, you're going to have to have the spirit of God. You're going to have to have the Holy Spirit. And if you're to have the Holy Spirit, you're going to have to have the truth of God, which is Jesus Christ. You've got to have Jesus Christ to have the Holy Spirit, to have the Holy Spirit to worship the Father. You see how it all fits together? And, and so he says, it's like the wind. Can't actually be seen. God the Father cannot actually be seen. Back in John chapter 1 again, and this time verse number 18, John chapter 1 verse 18, uh, John in writing the gospel said this, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. My friend, listen, no man has seen God. At that time, no man has seen God in this time. The only way that you can see God, the only way that you can have an understanding of God is you've got to see the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe his gospel. Jesus is the one that reveals the Father. Jesus is the one which was in the bosom of the Father and has declared him. You see, you can't see God. You just can't see him. And as God is a spirit, and we're talking here about the new birth, uh, is, is the working of the Holy Spirit, right? You can't see God because He's Spirit. You can't see the Holy Spirit because He's Spirit. But I thought about this, and it was a blessing to my heart. I hope it is to, to you as well. You can't see God, my friend, but you can know God. Amen. You can't see God, but you can know God. And you can't see the Holy Spirit, but you can have the Holy Spirit. 
Because he is the one that shows us God the Father. He, Jesus is the one that shows us God the Father. And he is the one who sends us the Holy Spirit. Look over to 1 John uh, chapter number 4. 1 John chapter number 4, uh, if you will, and, and, and a couple of verses there, uh, a few verses there, verse 11 down through verse 16. 1 John, John's first letter, his epistle, 1 John chapter 4, and picking up with verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man, now watch this, no man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. Hereby, hereby know we that, uh, that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of what? Of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we know and, and believe the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth, oh, don't miss this, dwelleth in God and God in him. Oh, you can't see God, but you can know God. And you can't see the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's like the wind. You can't see the Holy Spirit. But, the, but Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. You can't see the Holy Spirit, but you can have the Holy Spirit, my friend. And so it's like the wind. Do you see that? It's like the wind. There's one more. There's one more thought here uh, uh, that I want to share with you. And Jesus says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus talking in the, in the, in the natural, saying, how can this be? How, can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? And I could almost picture Jesus just kind of shaking his head. Uh, Nicodemus, uh, you're, you're, you're missing the point. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me get this straightened out for you. I'm not talking about the natural. I'm talking about the supernatural. And to enter into the kingdom of God, uh, to enter for heaven to be your home, for you to know God, the Father, for you to have the Holy Spirit of God in your life, for you to have those things. He, he said, look, it's like the wind. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And it's, and it's a work that's like the wind. And so it's like this. He came from heaven, but he cannot actually be seen. But y'all don't understand this. He can sure change your life. He can change your life. And the truth of the matter is, dear friend, like the wind, uh, you don't actually see the Holy Spirit, but you can see the result of the Holy Spirit when he works. You can see the result. You can see the result of the wind. That's why we say, look, uh, you can't, we, we say sometimes, do you see that wind? No, you didn't see the wind. You saw the trees move. You saw the leaves blowing around. You, you saw the results of the wind, but you didn't see the wind because the wind's invisible. It's the same way with the new birth. You don't see the way it's working, but you see what it brings about. It brings about a regeneration. Regeneration requires a spiritual rebirth. That's the result through faith in God and in his word. And understand, regeneration is real and, 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 and is a real and a personal experience because it is a real and a personal change in your life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. What, now, now get the word here, a new creature, a new creation. How else could you refer to that? A new birth. A new birth. He's a new creature. He's been born again. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, but all things have become new. And the Bible tells us in Psalm 55 and verse 19, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. My friend, someone that is truly saved, truly born again, is someone whose life has truly changed. The life is truly changed. For you see, the new birth is not the working of man. 
You can't make yourself born again. So many people are trying to. They, they, they try to do it by, by joining a religion. They try to do it by uh, doing some kind of good works. But no, you can't make yourself born again. Because understand, uh, the new birth, a regeneration, is not, now don't miss this, it is not the reformation of the old nature. You can't change your old nature. You can try. You can go to every, you can take every course online. You can go to every kind of uh, meeting and sit around a circle and, and talk with others who are struggling with this and that or that. You, you, can, you can do all kinds. You can, you can read all the books. You can go see all the psychiatrists. You, you can... You can try all the religions. You can try to do everything. But, but my friend, listen, uh, you can't make yourself born again because it's not the reformation of the old nature. You can't change your old nature. The old nature, according to the Bible, has to be put to death. You can't reform it. You have to kill it. It has to be put to death. That's what Paul writes about in Romans chapter 6. For he said this in verse number six, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. And Paul uh, got a hold of that for himself, his own testimony, when he said in Galatians 2 and verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. But he says, my old life is counted as dead. My old life is gone. Uh, I'm not the same man. That man don't live here anymore. I'm not the same man. The old life is gone. It's just counted as dead because I've been given that new life through faith in the Lord Jesus. And listen to the seriousness of this. Jesus said you must be born again. And it is a birth of the Spirit. It is being born again of the Holy Spirit. You said, well, that's like, what was that like? It's, it's like the wind. It, it has to come from heaven. It cannot actually be seen, but it can sure change your life. And so that's why Jesus told Nicodemus, said, you, you got to be born again. You must be born again. It's like the wind. You see what it does. You even hear it. And, and you even hear the sound of it. But you really don't know what all is going on with it. That's the way everyone that is born of the Spirit, it is, it, is the, it is the creative act of the Holy Spirit of God in your life. That's why Paul would say in Romans chapter 8 and verse 9, Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ. He is none of His. Dear friend, if you've got a good religion, but you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you don't belong to God. If you uh, are, are a philanthropist, you've given a lot of money, you've done all kinds of good works, but if you don't have the Spirit of Christ inside of you, you don't belong to God. If you don't belong to God, you've never been saved. If you've never been saved, you'll never get to heaven. He said, you must be born again. That's the key thing. Nail it down. And, and, and one of my favorite ways of thinking of it is, there's got to be a moment. There's got to be an experience. You've got to be able to know the time. I know for many people, you may have gotten saved, but you didn't write down. Nobody helped you. didn't write down the day, the time, the hour. But you see these other things, and you see that God's changed your life. And you got an inner uh, sense of understanding that, that the Spirit of God is there. Uh, and, and you know that it comes from a time. You may not know the day, but you really ought to be able to remember and ought to know the circumstances, ought to know the time, uh, ought to know, you know, about when. You, you ought to be able to pinpoint and say, I got saved back then. I got born again back then. 
it has to be, it, it, it is to be an experience, something that happens. And I believe this, a person who is truly born again, they know, they, they will know that it has happened. If you don't know that it's happened, then the real chance is it's not happened. And you need to trust Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life today. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand together, our heads bowed, our eyes closed for prayer. Lord, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the amazing, wonderful doctrine of the, of the new birth. And Lord, we, we know that so many people may, may get have a problem getting confused with it. But if we'll be honest with ourselves, Lord, the way, uh, the way you explain it to us in your word, the way you explained it to Nicodemus, if we'll really be honest and not try to uh, make something else out of it, we should understand it's, it's not a difficult thing. It's not a hard thing to know. Lord, it's like the wind. You said it's just, it's just like the wind. People need to get a hold of the wind of the Holy Ghost of God by faith in the gospel of our Savior, the Lord Jesus, who came, who died for us on the cross, buried in the tomb, rose again that third day. He's coming back again, we need, and, and, and people need to be ready by being born again by having that point that they know that it started over for them and they've got a new life, their old life is gone. Their new man or new woman, the old man, the old woman is dead. And, 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 they, and they lay it all upon you, Lord Jesus. Speak to hearts, to someone that catches this message online, help them, Spirit of God, draw themselves to you that they might be saved before it's too late that they might understand that they must be born again. And Lord, for that, we'll give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We'll sing together as Brother Tim leads us. Again. Page 270.